So we are now uh, on lecture 19th and uh, almost halfway uh, through the course and we are talking about uh, when I left uh, la you la in the la during the last lecture. Uh, so we are talking about uh, the steel making reactions actually. And I was discussing uh, the carbon oxygen reaction. That is what I was doing. Uh, and this is one of the principal uh, reactions in steel making. Uh, we will di discuss a series of reactions because we remember you know, from our knowledge of iron making that we have carbon, silicon, manganese, phosphorus as well as sulfur which are the principal impurities present in hot metal and we now need to drive these out and as I have mentioned repeatedly that oxidizing, refining or steel making is the way in order to drive these elements uh, out from steel. Uh, now, uh, Manganese is not so important as you see manganese actually is desirable. So, that is a little bit different. So, I will not rate manganese per se as an impurity, but other elements like carbon, silicon, phosphorus and sulfur needs to be controlled to a large extent. And so, there are four or five reactions which needs to be discussed how these reactions takes place, what are the mechanism of this reaction, thermodynamics and kinetics that needs to be discussed uh, before we can uh, you know get into uh, steel making which we know as of now we will be talking about basic oxygen steel making as well as basic electric arc furnace steel making because these as I have indicated are the two dominant roots of modern day steel making. Coming to carbon oxygen reaction as I have indicated if you we go through uh, quickly revise quickly what I said that we have the oxygen which comes uh, from the injected lens through the either the, either the lens or from the bottom to air whichever may be the case when we will see that we have bottom blown oxygen steel making converter later on of course, uh, as well as a top blown oxygen steel making converter. And <clears throat> I had indicated that top blown was the first configuration of oxygen steel making process uh, to be <coughs> commissioned. And this oxygen injected uh, into the melt uh, gets dissolved. This is a gas metal dissolution reaction and then this oxygen. Uh, reacts with dissolved carbon which is already present producing carbon monoxide or oxygen because there is abundance of iron in the system can also react with Fe which is the met you know and then produce the oxide phase and this oxide can also react with dissolved carbon and this reaction the last reaction that I am writing right now actually can will take place at slag metal interface. So, this is one reaction this is a this is a reaction in the melt phase itself. So, it is uh, you know both oxygen and iron they are uh, you know uh, oxygen and carbon uh, which are there in the dissolved iron. So, this reaction of course, is preceded by this reaction because oxygen is only available carbon is present as dissolved carbon, but oxygen is only available as dissolved oxygen provided this reaction uh, takes place. Okay? And <coughs> so, this is a you know gas metal reaction and then we have within the metal two different species reacting with each other and this essentially represents a slag metal uh, reaction. Now, these are the dominant reactions this considers to be all these reactions actually will take place to a very degree because at elevated temperature like 1600 degrees centigrade and also you know at atmospheric pressure or uh, total pressure close to 1 atmosphere all these reactions can take place to a certain degree. So, it is futile to say that this reaction occurs and this reaction does not occur. We may explain carbon oxygen reaction with regard to only this reaction, but that does not necessarily mean that the other reactions does not take place okay, that we must remember. Uh, <coughs> now, this and this are known to be uh, the dominant uh, reactions. There are various other ways also. For example, uh, carbon can get oxidized. For example, carbon can react with MnO. If MnO is formed, that is also a possible reaction, thermodynamically feasible reactions. But this reaction and this reaction are considered to be the dominant reactions in the system which contribute to decarburization. 
So, decarbonization is a reality, is a, is a thermodynamic possibility. So, there is no one can dispute that, that if we put in carbon, if you, if you carbonaceous melt or a melt containing carbon and pump oxygen or air into it, you know, at 1600 degree centigrade, always carbon will oxidize. So, there is no novelty in it. It is a reality. It is you know, a consequence of argon, uh, oxygen injection into the melt. So, but the question, more important question is that if it oxidizes at what rate it oxidizes. Suppose I take a melt and then you know, uh, the oxidation starts. If I have to eliminate the carbon, will it take three full day, one full year or you know, uh, half an hour within which I will be able to drive out that oxygen because that will determine the efficiency of the steel making process. So, the rate is more important having you know considered that uh, you know there these reactions uh, in the forward directions are all distinct possibilities or I would say will occur under steel making condition. You cannot prevent them when the pressure uh, temperature is very high and pressure is close to 1 atmospheric pressure total pressure. So, this graph also I have indicated and I have shown you that uh, the equilibrium of this particular reaction will tell us that there is a at PCO is equal to 1 atmosphere. So, I will say PCO and then we will say weight percent carbon into weight percent oxygen. If I write it in 1 weight percentage scale, okay, that is what it is. We can also write, you know, in Hendrian scale, we can write a Hendrian activity of carbon, Hendrian activity of oxygen, and then Hendrian activity in terms of an activity coefficient multiplied by the weight percentage itself. And because at fixed temperature and pressure, K equilibrium is constant, PCO if you take it to be 1 atmospheric pressure, this essentially implies that weight percentage carbon into weight percentage oxygen is constant, and there has to be a inverse relationship between the two, and that inverse relationship goes like this. And as I have indicated that experimental observations indicate that carbon oxygen reaction really yeah, takes place uh, you know uh, operates close to the equilibrium reaction equilibrium. Now, <coughs> this essentially indicates that if this is true then both these reactions are operating close to equilibrium. Now, if I have, because this is a slag metal reaction, if I also say that look, there is not only gas metal equilibrium, but there is also slag metal equilibrium, then we will find that for this much concentration of carbon in the system, if there is a slag metal equilibrium, then this particular chemical reaction will also be in equilibrium and the activity of carbon uh, iron oxide in the slag is going to be fixed. So, therefore, if we look at this particular reaction, we can say that K equilibrium and this we say 2 and if we say this to be 1 and then this is going to be is equal to PCO divided by <coughs> weight percentage carbon in the melt into weight percentage of FeO in the slag. So, a similar relationship can also be obtained. We must understand that as carbon content in the metal is very high, okay? then there is going to be lesser amount of. So, th there is going to be again an inverse relationship between what percentage carbon in the melt and what percentage if you in the melt, if you in the slag, should there be a slag metal equilibrium. Okay? So, I am assuming that the, there is, you know, this indicates that there is a gas metal equilibrium is there. And if we extended the hypothesis that there is also a slag metal equilibrium in the system, then I would also conclude that corresponding to this carbon this oxygen in the metal there has to be a fixed amount of activity of iron oxide is going to be fixed in the slack phase itself. So, this equation will essentially tell us that if we put PCO is a fixed pressure this is equilibrium constant is concerned. So, therefore, what percent carbon multiplied by what percent FeO has to be in the slag has to be a constant <coughs> and this constant in the literature typically at 1600 degree centigrade is given to be wet percentage carbon and wet percentage oxygen and this is 1.24 into 10 to the power minus 3. Okay? And then we have <coughs> the other reaction that we can talk about is uh, 2.4, this is really 2.4 okay? and this reaction that we are talking about wet percentage carbon into wet percentage FeO 
and this is roughly about 1.25. This value is corresponding to 1600 degree centigrade and PCO is equal to 1 atmosphere pressure. That is the real. 1600 degree centigrade and PCO is equal to 1 atmosphere. This is at 1600 degree centigrade gamma FeO is equal to 1.3 the activity coefficient of FeO in the slag because there we have used you know uh, the wet percentage the activity of or the mole fraction of FeO is equal to because it is a non ideal solution slag is a not an ideal solution. So, you introduce activity coefficient the activity of FeO multiplied by wet percentage of FeO. So, we get 1.3 <coughs> and then PCO is roughly about 1.5 atmosphere it is. But this essentially tells us that there is an inverse relationship similar to this in the system. So, this is this gives you the clue that so long as the metal con metal has high oxygen con high carbon content you go here okay higher carbon content the melt will not contain much of an oxygen it will only contain this much of a dissolved oxygen. Similarly, on the basis of this reactions we can also con conclude that the ox you know FeO content of the slag is also going to be smaller during the initial period of. So, you started to blow oxygen so FeO will form at a very slow rate okay. We, of course, from here we cannot infer rate because we are not talking of kinetics, but we say that the possibility of FeO formation is going to be less whatever if you forms carbon will reduce it. And so therefore, the dissolved oxygen is also going to be small and if your content is going to be small. It is only when the carbon content has decreased below a certain level that large amount of FeO starts to form. So, as, as the carbon content is going to move in this direction during the refining period you can understand. So, the carbon concentration is going to be decreasing and as a result of which progressively more and more oxygen is going to be present in the bath itself. And that is why if you remember that when I have written steel composition I have said that the last column was that dissolved oxygen content of the slag you know before the temperature column. If you look back or refer to one of the you know previous preceding lectures you will see that when I wrote steel, steel composition and temperature last but one column indicated that I have added an additional parameter dissolved oxygen in steel because as we are driving out carbon as far as the carbon oxygen equilibrium is concerned we have more amount of oxygen in the melt itself. The consequence of it is visualized on the basis of this equation that therefore, there is going to be significant amount of FeO which will be present in the slack phase okay? and this large scale FeO oxidation will you know occur particularly during the lower you know when the carbon content is going to be very very small and at that particular point what happened is the last period is going to be prone to yield losses. You want to produce iron, you want to produce steel, but your steel is landing up as a FeO in the system. So, therefore, if you tend to blow a little more than the desired amount of oxygen into the bath, suppose you have reached your carbon content and now you put in more a little bit more amount of oxygen into the system, what will be the consequence? The consequence will be there will be huge amount of FeO formation and you must understand large quantity of FeO formation is going to be an exothermic affair and as a result of which the temperature is going to be very, very large temperature of the melt. So, therefore, the last stage of steel making is very, very critical when the carbon content of the bath has gone down because then there is a chance of widespread FeO formation because of smaller carbon content and as a result of bath temperature increasing itself. So, carbon oxygen reaction you know is very important and uh, to be able to identify that at what point suppose I have said I started with 4.3 wet percentage carbon this is my initial carbon I know C i and I need a C f carbon content which is 0 0.0 say 5 weight percentage. Your ability to control precisely that I will not blow you know even a little bit of oxygen the moment the carbon content reached 0 0.5 you know is, is, is a pivot for uh, to do and the pivot to, to determine the economics of the steel making process itself. And if we, so the moment if we do you know arrive at 0 0.5 and then we blow that period is called the overblowing period. You are overblowing because you have reached your desired carbon and still you are continuing to blow. 
and that is going to have a disastrous consequence as far as the iron oxide content of the slag, melt temperature, refractory life, converter operating life, etc., are concerned. So, we will be able to drive thermodynamic stelsis, we will be able to drive carbon, huh? but how we drive it will determine that whether we can make steel making profitable or not, how we will be able to drive carbon out or what rate you know will tell us that what is the end carbon content, how judicial, how precisely we have been able to control uh, the end carbon, this is the end carbon content and this is, this is called the in steel making this is called the end point control. What is end point control? End point control means target carbon reaching the tar target carbon precisely and you know the more precisely you are able to do it better is going to be the process performance, better is going to be the profitability and so on and so forth. So, we will see you know visit carbon oxygen reaction again uh, you know when you talk about the specific steel making process. We have not talked so far about the kinetics, decarburization kinetics now that we have not talked. So, we will uh, you know uh, discuss that uh, a little bit uh, later when we finish discussing the thermodynamics of all steel making reactions. Let us now look at uh, the silicon oxygen reaction dissolved silicon and dissolved oxygen reaction. Again I repeat that it does not mean that this is the only way of reaction. Silicon can react with FeO if FeO forms and FeO comes in contact with silicon because silicon according to the Lingham diagram we know has a more affinity towards oxygen at 1600 degree centigrade. So, if FeO forms because of its large scale presence in the system because 95 atom out of 100 atoms is oxygen Fe. So, if even if FeO forms you know, in the, and FeO comes in contact with silicon, then silicon plus FeO is also going to be a, <coughs> a possible reaction. So, we can visualize the silicon removal reaction, but nonetheless no matter what happens silicon is going to be removed as dissolved silicon is going to be removed as dissolved silica under steel making condition. This is this reaction from silicon oxidation to silica again just like carbon even silicon has greater affinity because carbon oxygen line CCO line in the Lingham diagram is here and SiSiO O2 line is much below it which means that SiO2 is a much more stable compound or Si has a greater affinity towards oxygen than carbon does. Okay. So, therefore, this reaction silicon plus oxygen producing silica. So, we understand now one thing that carbon oxygen reaction tells us that we will have FeO in the slag that is not preventable under steel making condition okay. because as if you have slag and metal will try to attain equilibrium if you have more and more oxygen in the bath accordingly the FeO is going to form. This essentially tells us that we will silicon oxygen that silica also will go to the slag phase and we are doing steel making under basic condition. Okay. The basicity V ratio is 3.54 something like that. So, therefore, we will have. So, these are the three major constituents steel making slag will not contain any aluminum because the melt does not have any trace of aluminum. No aluminum could have been reduced in the blast furnace because of the obvious limitation of temperature and pressure that I have indicated to you earlier when I was talking about hearth as well as Bosch reactions in the blast furnace. So, these three are the principal constituents silicon will oxidize and there are secondary constituents we are going to add and determine the slag and this you know when you use CaO then what happens is SiO2 is a strong acetic oxide and SiO2 combines with silica and as a result of which what happens the activity of silica is going to be substantially silica is completely fixed with CaO and as a result of which silica's activity is going to go down and if you do not have CaO in that case what you are forming you are forming a pure silica okay? and in pure silica the activity of silica is very very high which is equal to 1. But when you talk about uh, you know silicon dioxide in or silica in presence of CaO and the CaO is capturing because of the acid base uh, interaction CaO uh, SiO2 is getting fixed in the basic oxides of CaO in that case what happens the activity of silica is virtually negligible. Okay. Under that condition you can consider that ASiO2 is all for all practical purpose is tending towards 0 or 
gamma activity coefficient, uh, gamma uh, activity coefficient of silica assumes a very, very low value no matter what is the percentage of silica. Now, you can imagine that you have if you have silicon uh, and then uh, silicon content of the hot metal, hot metal silicon content, hot metal silicon content as I have indicated typically it would go up to you know some if you have a low silicon uh, to about high silicon could be about you can put about 2 percent. Sometimes I have put it at 2.5. So, this is the order of the value. We will never put silicon as 0 0.02 or we will never put silicon as you know 10 weight percentage. No, these are not the order of values. This is the correct range or the correct order of values. Okay? I, I can write it 1 also, 1.5 also, 2 also, 2.5 also. But certainly if you write 8 here, people will say you do not know much about iron and steel making. Okay? Similarly, if you write it 0 here, it is perhaps not desirable because you do not know then that silicon actually partitions between hot metal and slag within the blast furnace itself. So, this value, this range is not sacrosanct. I have been repeating these things again and again because you will find that Dr. Majumdar has quoted some values which another lecturer is giving a different value that does not necessarily mean that we are in disagreement. What we essentially referring referred to is you know or suggest or uh, you know I tend to suggest is that this range of value is going to be blast furnace specific, this is going to be practice specific, this is going to be the raw material specific. So, you can put any value so long as the order of magnitude is uh, correct it has to be a representative value. Now, if you have you consider let us take 1 percent, 1 weight percent silicon and let us consider we have 300 ton converter. Okay? That means, we have 3 ton silica that is what it is 1 weight percent silicon 300 ton melt and we have 3 ton silica okay? 3 ton silicon sorry and 3 ton silicon if you consider that silica is what? silica is 28 plus 16 into 2 60. So, it is 60 by 28. So, that is roughly approximately about 6 tons silica. If we think of a basicity V ratio which is something like 3.5 or let us say for the time being it is you know 4. So, in that case if you try to use a basicity is equal to 4 that means, you will have 24 ton limes just to maintain that basicity okay? and silica is going to be 6 ton. So, 30 ton of slag you have already generated and if you think that you know what is the percentage as we will see what percentage this could go something around by weight percentage 15 to 20 weight percentage that is the weight percentage of slag. 50 to 20 weight percentage in the slag. So, therefore, this can be something like you know this 30. So, I would say another 5 tons or something like that. So, these 3 combines together could be about 35 40 tons of slag which has been generated in the system. So, initially in a system you have put in hot metal there is no slag and then after some time as the blowing oxygen you are pumping in lime is getting dissolved, silica is forming, FU is forming and the slag is gradually forming. So, from 0 ultimately as the process ends the slag in a 300 ton vessel slag could go up to 30 ton, 35 ton, 40 ton or 45 ton that is the order of the value. Okay? So, you can imagine uh, you know uh, that how much slag is generated during this oxidation reactions which uh, you know will essentially drive out carbon, silicon, uh, manganese etcetera from the system. So, Silicon oxidation per se is uh, not an issue under steel making condition because the activity of silica is very very small in the basic slag and therefore, there is a inherent tendency for this reaction to move and go to completion uh, in the forward direction itself. And as a result of which I would say that it is possible indeed to get a final silicon in the crude steel. Crude steel is what? which will come out of the primary steel making decarburization vessel where we are or the primary steel making reactor which we term as a decarburization vessel and this could be very well close to 0 all the silicons will get. But the final steel may not contain 0 silicon as we will see later on because we often do the oxidation of steel 
Okay, deoxidation is important because we have lot of oxygen dissolved in steel as I have indicated on the basis of carbon oxygen reaction. So, deoxidation particularly by silico manganese will introduce silicon and make silicon manifest not at 0 level, but at some you know, finite level of 0 0.05, 0 0.08, 0 0.09 depending on the extent of deoxidation in the final product chemistry. But immediately after decarbonization, it is possible to get extremely low silicon huh? 301, 201 or even 0. Okay? So, there is not much to be said because I want to have basic environment, I want to have basicity very large and therefore, I have a condition where I am supplying oxygen, temperature is high. So, therefore, silicon will get oxidized in the oxidizing environment and that I have a basic slag, the slag will capture uh, silicon and silica is going to be fixed in slag as calcium uh, silicate. So, nothing needs to be said as far as the silica rate is extremely rapid silicon deoxidation. So, within the first 2 3 minutes after putting in oxygen almost all the silicon will see depending on the process of course, because I said that if you are using an open hearth steel making vis a vis a pneumatic steel making and an oxygen steel making the rate of you know in all the converters in all the steel making systems these reactions will take place, but the rate at which these reactions we are going to take place in different systems in different vessels are going to be discreetly different and that is what you know determines the overall economics of the process and we will see why oxygen steel making converter has become popular particularly when you analyze the rate of the reaction. So, I would say that in an oxygen steel making converter okay, within the first 2 3 minutes uh, itself all the silicon in the bath is going to be completely eliminated, but the total elimination of carbon is going to be taking some amount of time particularly the decarburization rate you know falls as a function of time there is a steady decarburization period as we will study and then following the steady decarburization period towards the end the decarburization rate falls and as a result of which but very rapid decarb you know you can take 200 300 tons and you can drive out how much of you know 4 percent in every 100 ton you have 4 tons of carbon okay so therefore if you if you talk about 300 tons converter you have 12 ton of car carbon and that 12 ton of carbon you will be able to drive out in 30 minutes to 45 minutes of blowing time so you can imagine that the rate of decarburization really is enormous we'll deal all these things in greater detail so this is enough for us as far as silicon reaction is concerned nothing needs to be said specifically it will happen spontaneously silica will form silicon silica will get uh, fixed by calcium oxide and its elimination poses no problem to us. Let us look at now manganese reaction. And that manganese reaction is again, I mean, I will like to now represent the two versions of the equation. So, one is a manganese oxidation reaction, that manganese is there in the melt, and then manganese oxide forms, that is how manganese gets into the slag, and then we have <coughs> Fe. That is one mode that is possible. This manganese, if it happens, suppose initially when the bath contains quite a bit of carbon, if this reaction takes place, then there is it is also possible that we can have an alternative reaction, which we will discuss following the discussion of this particular reaction that we have carbon in the bath and MnO in the slag, and that can also go simultaneous uh, reduction forming carbon monoxide and MnO. This is also possible. Manganese as we all know, we are not interested to drive out manganese indeed uh, all of you may be knowing that manganese uh, contributes to what is known as solid solution hardening in steel. Okay? So, manganese is a um, you know, desirable element because manganese and steel are like brothers in the periodic table, uh, they occupy very close position, they have same uh, crystal structure they have same you know, very close atomic weight 55 and 56 and when they mix together they form ideal solutions. Okay? So, therefore, there is no need for us to you know uh, take extra effort uh, and consider manganese an impurity and then drive you out. No, we will try to retain manganese as far as uh, possible in the system, but the reality is that manganese also has a great affinity towards oxygen just like iron because iron manganese phosphorus lines 
per se I would say manganese has a little bit more affinity towards oxygen. So, manganese line is slightly lower, but I think manganese, phosphorus and you know uh, iron line in the Lingam diagram you can consider them to be more or less uh, similar. Okay? So, <coughs> if you if if you can get only issue is that if he is 95 percent manganese is only 1 percent or 1.2 percent. Okay? So, therefore, possibility of oxygen finding a manganese atom is much more remote than possibility of an oxygen dissolved oxygen atom finding uh, you know an uh, iron atom in the system itself. So, therefore, sporadic or, or uh, frequent oxidation or rampant oxidation of while iron oxide is possible rampant oxidation of manganese may not be possible, but this is certainly manganese can of course, as I have indicated this is also a possibility oxygen if it comes in contact with dissolved manganese then MnO is going to form, but this perhaps you know in steel making system because of uh, the huge enormous slag metal reaction area uh, constitutes one of the mechanism mechanism of you know or the or a, or a, or a dominant mechanisms of manganese transfer in the system. So, our objective in steel making is not to go oxidize too much of manganese. Okay? Some manganese oxidation is inevitable because of the environment because of high temperature, but we do not want to you know have slag containing much of manganese oxide also that is not desirable. Okay? So, we want to retain manganese. So, I will not like to have you know this reaction uh, going in the forward direction. One important thing is you will see that as the FeO content of the slag increases, uh, therefore, uh, what happens is this the activity of FeO is going to be increasing and as a result of which this reaction will have a tendency to go from left to right. So, manganese oxidation is going to be promoted provided FeO content of the slag is large and this will happen only towards the later part of the refining period because later part of the refining period only when carbon has gone down as you have seen oxygen in the bath has increased and if you in the system has in slag in increased that is the time therefore, this reaction can proceed from the left to right. So, towards the later part actually the manganese oxidation is far more critical than towards the beginning part of the steel making process. Now, we must also understand that this manganese oxide is a basic oxide. We cannot prevent a few there is going to be significant amount of FeO in the sitting in the slag. So, there is going to be significant chances of manganese getting into the slag phase that we that is not preventable under the steel making condition, but this manganese oxide which sits in the slag is a basic oxide. It is more basic than iron oxide and in the slag also I have more CaO. So, more and more is the basicity of the slag. Okay? There is a conflict between this oxide and this oxide. These are like you know uh, two uh, what do you call the criminals in the same area. Okay? So, this is a bigger criminal, this is a smaller criminal. So, therefore, you know in the presence of calcium oxide manganese oxide in the slag is restless. It wants to run away from slag and that is why you say that as the basicity increases the activity coefficient of manganese oxide in the slag also increases. So, therefore, a higher basic slag because thus slag will also lot of progressive lime dissolution will take place and we will see how the slag develops or forms uh, in the steel making process. We will see that towards the later part when we have higher amount of FeO and greater chance of amino oxidation, but there is one factor which is favorable for us that the slag has now become you know rich in CaO it has high basicity and that will prevent. So, Mn will see that if you is sitting in the slag, but still it will not like to go there because the activity coefficient of Mn in the slag is going to be substantially higher or because the slag contains and that is the consequence of slag becoming much more basic and so on and so forth. So, therefore, now we can write down the equilibrium constant and that will come out in the equilibrium constant for example, K equilibrium if you write down and then we say activity of MnO. So, that we can say gamma MnO in the slag and multiplied by weight percentage of MnO and then we can say gamma FeO activity coefficient of FeO into FeO in the slag sorry percentage FeO in the slag multiplied by and this is weight percent Mn. And this tells us that we can now write that weight percent MnO. So, this is like our 
you know the desulfurization partition coefficient ls that we have introduced that how much of sulfur sitting in the slag divided by how much of sulfur sitting in the metal. So, this is L m n I can say wet percentage m n in the metal and this as you can see here is going to be equal to okay, uh, something like k equilibrium prime uh, because we have engulfed the activity coefficients into the equilibrium constant and therefore, this is going to be <coughs> percentage f u in the slag which essentially tells us more manganese can be partitioned towards the slack phase in favor of the slack phase with increasing amount of FU. That is the consequence which I have qualitatively explained when I wrote the first equation itself. Now, if you look at the this equation, the top equation which I have written in red. So, we can write another equilibrium constant for this and then we can see that what happens. So, we can now write uh, that uh, wet percentage uh, k equilibrium and this is our second equation say this is our first equation. So, this is our k equilibrium 1 and this is k equilibrium 2 and then we if we write down and this are writing based on our hypothesis because we have assumed there is a slag metal equilibrium right from when we are talking about you know carbon C plus FeO and then we said that not only there is a gas metal equilibrium, but there is also a slag metal equilibrium in the system. Now, if we write down the equilibrium constant here and then we will see that we will write down P C O okay, and then we have what percentage M N and then we have what percentage M N O, what percentage M N O which is in the slag and multiplied by wet percentage of carbon. Or we can say that wet percentage of MNO okay, and <coughs> we can say this is uh, MNO in the slag divided by wet percentage of M n. So, here what happens is we have gamma M n o also should have been written okay, and then we can write down that metal. So, we have taken this. So, this is equal to <coughs> k equilibrium 2 into wet percentage of carbon. multiplied by and what we are left here is the PCO value. What percentage carbon k equilibrium to gamma m n o. And if you visualize this now, that is what we, we can see that <coughs> uh, the gamma m n o in the slag this, once this value is very very high or this value is very very high wet percentage of carbon which is in the initial stage and gamma m n o. So, in, in the initial stage manganese oxidation is going to be limited by the presence. So, the high carbon content of the bath is favorable that it will not allow manganese to go towards the later part when the carbon content has gone down it is the gamma m n o which now has increased because of progressive dissolution of lime into the slack phase and this gamma m n o is going to be large and as a result of which this is going to be small and this is going to be small essentially implies that the wet percentage m n o going to be in the slag is going to be small. Now, this can be people have represented this information pictorially very nicely and that is going to be we can say that percentage wet percentage of F u o in the slag and the line goes like this and there are two lines like this. One is basicity ratio is equal to 2 and the other is basicity ratio is equal to 4 and this is wet percentage m n o in the slag divided by wet percentage m n in the metal which essentially tells us that if you consider two different cases one is here okay, and the second is here.
then we can see that if you go from this basis if you are content increase the if you are content to this then what happens the partition coefficient increases so this goes to a value of here and this is show, shows us a value of here which essentially is a confirmation experimental confirm these are experimental graphs which people have generated okay and as a result of which you know what we can now conclude is that <coughs> we have as the FEO content increases uh, in the slag, we have more amount of MNO. And similarly, in this particular figure also, that we have what we have seen that if you go from you know 4 to 2, if you de decrease the basicity of the slag, in that case, what happens? There is going to be more MNO formation, and that is what have been explained. Although, and this reason for this that when we decrease, you know, at the same FEO level. If the basicity is decreased, why does the MNO uh, content of the slag decreases comes out from the simple uh, you know, fact that the activity coefficient of MNO becomes very, very large, which is just like wet percentage of carbon. And you remember this wet percentage of carbon can also be replaced by because there is equilibrium between slag and metal. So, one should be able to this is going to be because I have written wet percentage of carbon multiplied by wet percentage of EO is, is equal to something like. <coughs> 1.25 and that value could be taken into account okay, in order to represent. Uh, so, this is possible because this multiplied by this is also shown to be a constant uh, as I have indicated <coughs> 1.25 or something like that that is what I have written. So, what, what percentage carbon can be replaced by 1.25 divided by uh, what percentage if you. Now, we can also write down an equation and that equation should give us that something like uh, 0.4 weight percentage carbon that is uh, this equation is represented where I have written it here that if you substitute the value. So, this value can be written in terms of inverse of this the simplified form of this is going to be weight percentage M n in the metal. So, if you invert it then this is going to be directly proportional to carbon and wet percentage MNO and that is going to be <coughs> so if you substitute the activity coefficient of MNO if we put a temperature value Okay, because we know the delta G naught value for this reaction K equilibrium 2 is known from the delta G naught value and that value is to be evaluated you know minus RT ln K equilibrium by putting the correct temperature. So, that K equilibrium is known to us if we substitute a value of gamma MNO which is more than you know uh, 1 okay, much larger than 1 and an appropriate value of PCO like 1, 1.2 atmosphere in that case we can you know find out that under still making condition if you can put the representative values for gamma MNO, PCO and K equilibrium by fixing you know the pressure and temperature conditions then a, you know a corollary of this particular equation or the final form of this particular equation is generally represented as per person. Now that note that this is no more MNO here the numerator is MNO and here MNO is in the denominator that is why the carbon has gone you know uh, in the numerator and that is what we have obtained. So, this is a empirical equation typically. So, because when you do you know uh, some first hand calculation in the steel melt shop you really do not want to use uh, you know uh, substitute temperature, substitute pressure, experimental measure gamma MNO then you put into the equation to determine the relationship no that is not the way you want you do you know you take the standard values which are representative which has people have shown that they work reasonably well for, for steel making on you know uh, conditions. So, one can rather than do repeating the entire exercise start with this particular uh, equation and then say that you know uh, this ratio under steel making condition can come out to be depending on the equilibrium final equilibrium ratio. So, if you put the final carbon content uh, you know to be 0 0.05 0 0.06 we can find out that what is the wet percentage MN by wet percentage MNO ratio in the system itself. And then we should be able to find out that what is the manganese content. 
So, uh, Mengen is content uh, you know by measuring the melt uh, temperature uh, melt concentration or melt composition and then we can also determine that how much of Mn is sitting in the slack phase as MnO. And in this context I would like to say that I would like to reiterate that our objective is to ensure uh, uh, that not all the manganese land up into the slack phase. We have to uh, the manganese recovery in the steel making process is a very important exercise. Okay? So, therefore, we will like to retain we'll operating condition uh, you know we will try to maneuver in such a way that you know manganese does not really uh, get oxidized uh, too much and land up in the slack phase. <coughs> About desulphurization under steel making condition, now, I have already explained you know uh, sulfur reaction. I have discussed in the context of blast furnace iron making and I have also discussed uh, uh, desulphurization in the context of external desulphurization, talking about the thermodynamics, kinetics and introducing such definitions as the sulphide capacity of slag etcetera. So, nothing needs to be said here and except for the fact that we remember that if we write the equation in molecular form uh, the reaction which is applicable to iron making is represented like this. So, sulphur and then calcium oxide in the slag and then we have carbon in the melt and then we have Fe plus calcium sulphide and then we will say that this is carbon monoxide. This reaction is an exothermic reaction okay? that this is this reaction is iron making in iron making. On the other hand in still making there is very little uh, you know carbon in the bath. So, therefore, we can represent in the initial period of course, a similar reaction can take place, but at the carbon concentration starts to decrease. Okay? So, therefore, we can have <coughs> and we can also you know say that this reaction you can imagine that the slag metal and the slag when it is coming through in contact with the coke particle and it is flowing through this. Okay? So, the metal slag and the solid coke are also I could have not written that yes you know this reaction metal and slag on the coke surface also if you have a solid here that reaction is possible because there are in the dead man zone when the metal is trickling down then the solids are there the slag metal can come in contact with the solids together and the three phase meeting on the surface of the solid coke particle and so can also lead to this particular reaction. So, but in still making we do not have this kind of a scenario and particularly towards the later part of still making when you do not have uh, the you know much of carbon left in that case the reaction now what happens is we have FeO and calcium sulphide that is the reaction it is again a slag metal reaction and we must see that because as such if you are content you know because of oxidation oxygen injection as such if you is forming. So, the activity of FU in the slag is very very large. So, further oxidation this reaction goes from the left to right in still making resulting in the formation of FU, but FU is already formed or forming you know because of the oxygen injection into the bath itself. So, therefore, this reaction will not the likelihood of this reaction proceeding in the forward direction in a steel making under steel making condition is going to be extremely remote. Okay? Even if this reaction which takes place and some sulphide lands up you know uh, in the slack phase and high if you are content in the slag because iron has a great affinity towards slag, you know sulphur. So, therefore, and calcium has a relatively more affinity towards oxygen if you take consider the free energy 
a formation of calcium sulfide and calcium oxide if you sulf ferrous sulfide and ferrous, ferrous oxide you will find that calcium has greater affinity towards oxygen than with sulfur. So, in a system where calcium sulfide meets FeO in that case you know iron can take the sulfur and they can mutually exchange um, you know oxygen and sulfur between them and as a result of which what happens desulfurization may not be possible. So, therefore, under still making condition this reaction to drive this reaction in the forward direction is going to be no matter even if you can use very large basicity 4 okay, you get minuscule or very small reduction in sulfur. So, the so sulfur control is therefore possible only in the blast furnace as well as in the pretreatment process knowing very well that under oxidizing environment this creates a reducing environment this promotes the formation of CO this reaction does not promote the formation of CO. So, as a result of which we can say that desulfurization is not possible under steel making condition primary steel making. In secondary steel making we will see when we will have a neutral condition when no oxygen injection will be there then we will see that we will now be able to do. So, there are specialized techniques following the primary steel making where we will be creating a neutral atmosphere okay, under those condition some sulfur removal is going to be possible. So, major chunk of the sulfur removal therefore, has to be done in the blast furnace has to be done through the pretreatment or external desulfurization and then forget about desulfurization in the primary steel making reactor. If you have to do further desulfurization okay, to produce ultra low sulfur steel in that case there are a host of secondary steel making processes which we will discuss towards the later part of the course. And this reaction as we have indicated that sulfur in the metal and this is the molecular uh, in ionic form of the equation. So, that is what is this is in the slag and this is in the metal, but whether I write it in oxygen in the metal. So, this reaction really uh, is not going to be taking place much because the activity of oxygen you know as per the carbon oxygen diagram you remember as the carbon content is going down the oxygen activity in the bath is increasing and as a result of it this is already large. So, there is a inherent tendency to oppose this forward reaction by the strong backward reaction because of the large concentration of oxygen dissolved oxygen in the system and as a result of which whether you write this equation or whether you write there is one and the same equation I would like to conclude today's lecture by saying once more that steel making is not the site for a significant amount of desulfurization. So, beyond that we will not discuss anything. So, the last reaction to consider. So, we have talked about carbon oxygen reaction, we have talked about silicon oxygen reaction, the thermodynamics, we have talked about manganese oxygen reaction. I have just told you about the sulfur reactions and you know all we have discussed. So, nothing needs to be talked about it. The remain last remaining equation is the phosphorus reaction and that is going to be you know taken up in my next lecture.